In this session, I will be talking about the market basket analysis, how we can implement this market basket analysis in R, what are the kind of uh, interpretations that we can make once we have performed the market ba basket analysis. So theoretically, what is market basket analysis and all we have already discussed in our conceptual uh, session which was covered before this. So here I am primarily looking at how do we really uh, execute it, right? And uh, what are the kind of interpretations that I can make once I get my data analysis performed in R. So this is what uh, we are trying to look at. What is, how do I get my data? How do I really set my data if I have to... Uh, Conduct market basket analysis, what are the minimum uh, requirements I have in case I have to conduct my market basket analysis. Then I will be talking about really uh, what are the kind of packages that I have to install, R related packages that I really need to install to execute the market basket analysis. Right? And based on that, how do I really uh, get to all the different kinds of association rules that are existing in my various transactions. And one, once I get the rules, how do I really visualize all those kind of rules? Now, those are the various things that we are going to look at, right? So, just getting into it. The first thing is we require two important packages. A rules, A is the association rule. And A rules with. A rules with is more and more a kind of a visualization package. So you can do some kind of good charts and graphs when you are uh, using the A rules with package. Whereas the A rules is primarily to create your rules, association rules. This package is more and more helpful. So my data file, the way my data file should be is like this. In a text file, or in a DAT file, right? My data should be in the form of a comma separated kind of, uh, or probably a, a space separated kind of values, right? So uh, it's like, uh, let's say for customer one, right? Whatever are the purchases he had made when he came to the store, they will all be space separated like this. Customer two, Again, what all purchases he or she has made. So, this is how we have a list of all the transactions in a text file. So, reading that text file, I will read it using this function called read lines. If my data is present in the text file or in the dat file, I can very well read it using the read lines. So, let me just check here. I have a text file containing retail transactions. So, I am reading it into this local variable called retail, right? I am doing a read lines and uh, I am giving the path of my text file which contains all my transactions. So, this is what I am loading it. So, if you look at the class of retail, what you are getting is it is a character because it is an entire text file that we are simply reading, right? So, I have read the data from the text file. Now, a few things I can do on the top of it. Let me look at the head of it. Right. So, I take the head of retail. So, the first six, six elements I am going to get. I could see here citrus fruit, space, semi-finished bread, space, margarine, space, ready soups. Then tropical fruit, space yogurt, space coffee, whole milk. Pip fruit, space yogurt, space cream cheese, space meat spread. So you could see these are the different kinds of transactions that are typically done at a particular superstore. At a particular store. So when it is talking about the first one, these are all the various items people have purchased, item headers which people have purchased uh, with the first transaction. In the first transaction, the first customer who visited the store in the morning, he has purchased a few citrus fruits, 
along with that a semi semi finished bread then there is a margarine and there are ready soups that he has purchased the second transaction that has happened tropical fruit yogurt and coffee similarly third transaction only whole milk fourth transaction there was pip fruit yogurt cream cheese and meat spreads like that now you can see so there are so many transactions that have been performed and in each of them so this is what i call as one market basket one transaction here in my terminology of market basket analysis this whole transaction is called as one basket within this basket these are the various items that have been purchased samely so i can call them as transactions i can call them as baskets now i want to really analyze these basket seeing which items are uh, procured together which items uh, are uh, are uh, have been purchased many times which items have purchased have been purchased together all these kinds of things come as a part of the market basket analysis so i could even look at the tail for this retail wherein i could see okay the first one tropical fruit other vegetables domestic eggs way back ketchup soda dishes so these are the things the last person has procured so you could see each one of the different items that are being purchased by different sets of people in different transactions so that's the whole stuff i can also have a look at the summary of this retail to get a high level understanding so it's saying length is 19670 which means all together 19670 transactions of data is there with me right i have all together 19670 transactions within which again different kinds of items might have been procured purchased by the people so each row is representing a single market basket of items that are purchased together so overall i got 19670 transactions that happened during a period i want to really analyze these try to understand some kind of patterns that i can see within this 19670 transaction so this is where the first thing that we do is we will try to split this data right so because if it is in this form i can't do any kind of analysis so because of that what we are saying is every line wherein i could see separated by space let it be split into different products i want it to be split into different uh, products now this is where i'll use str split string split so every line i want it to be split based on the space so unless it is split wherever there is a blank space so once this is split then i can do a detailed analysis because once it is split it becomes a data type of list from a character data type it becomes a list data type we could see now so either i can uh, overwrite it on the same or probably i'll call retail underscore list where i would uh, typically convert this using str split string split where i give retail as the input and i'll put a space saying wherever the space comes based on that you do the splitting now if i really want i can check out the head of retail underscore list to check what it comes now you could see the first list contains citrus fruit semi finished bread margarine ready soups the second item of the second list is tropical fruit yogurt coffee whatever we got earlier similarly i can do a tail as well right just to check the list so i could see in the tail also these are the elements that i am getting as a part of my list so the inspection of the list is so and you could see the data type as well so you could look at this class associated with retail underscore list now it has been changed from the character to a list so it should be a list 
and randomly also so if i had uh, installed the car package right instead of head and tail i could also have a look at sum sum means randomly some values will be pulled out and would be shown to us so even i could quickly check out all these various elements but now comes i have to perform the market basket analysis for this data the first thing is i cannot i mean it's not uh, advised to perform market basket analysis on a list but we have uh, a type called transactions right just like a list object we have a transactions object also and uh, uh, converting it into a transaction converting a list into transaction is quite co is comfortable if you have your a rules package so that's the reason i want to install the a rules and a rules with i think they must already be installed in my system so let me uh, uh, simply load them so a rules is a package i have loaded and along with that i will also load a rules which which is more to do with the visualization of the a rules so i'll uh, load these two packages right i'll load these uh, two packages now i will try to convert the list that i have got into a transaction so uh, let me call it if i want i'll keep it as retail underscore list itself but just to be on the safer side i'll call it as retail underscore transaction i'll use this function called as as is something that will coerce from one form to the other so i'll take retail underscore list which is a list i will convert it into transactions object so the as is a very generic function which i can use to transform from one type to the other so i am uh, using as retail list comma transactions to convert my list object into a transactions object so because of which now the transactions object now the list has got converted into transactions object right now it is transactions all together now if you really want perform a summary right if you want first check the class of this object retail underscore trans check the class of it now you see it's a transactions object which is there as a part of the a rules package right so just quickly have a check of this now once it is converted into transaction the same thing right when it was a list you look at this when you have given retail underscore list for summary all you have got is a very simple information saying how many elements are there in each of the list nothing more than that but when you do the same summary not on the list but on the transactions object you get lot more important information it says 19600 so the transactions are look are typically represented as item matrix in a sparse format so when i look at it as a item sparse matrix what it means is here it is showing there are 19680 rows right 19670 rows and it's saying 187 columns so 187 columns means there are total of 187 items that are there unique items that have been uh, uh, listed 19670 uh, transactions have been recorded now the way it might have it has uh, captured this items matrix what it means is so 1 2 3 1 up to 19670 then i have 187 columns one column for each product 1 2 3 so on 187 now if uh, item number 5 uh, has been purchased so this is item number 5 in transaction 1 it would be shown as 1 all others will be shown as black so that's how this matrix gets populated which means some of the values so at some places the value will exist 
rest all will be blank. So in the first uh, transaction, out of these 187 products, which all products are there? Only there the numbers will exist, all others will look blank. Now that is where it says there is a density of only 2.499%. So what does that mean to me? Out of this overall, what are the number of transactions, uh, what are the number of cells if I have 19,670 rows and 187 columns, my total uh, cells are this much, 19,670 times 187. So overall I will have 30, uh, 3.678 million transaction, uh, 3.678 uh, million cells are there, right? 3,678,290 cells are there as an intersection between 19,670 rows and 187 column. But out of that, the data is present only 2.499%. So it's as good as saying if I take this number and I multiply it with 3.678 million, so I am going to get 91,924. Now that means only 91,924 purchases are done, I mean products are purchased as a part of this 19,000 transaction. Right, overall 91,924 units have been purchased across 90,670 transactions across 187 products. That's the typical meaning of this density of 0 0.024. So I can use the density function. So only 2.49% of the values are filled. Then I'll get most frequent items that are purchased. So, which means, uh, see, out of the 19,670 rows, right, uh, 19,670 transactions, 5,026 transactions have whole milk. Whole milk is present in 5,026 transactions, which means almost uh, uh, 5,000 people, 5,000 transactions that have happened today or uh, in this period, they had purchased whole milk. That's the topper. Other vegetables were purchased in 3,800 transactions. Rolls and buns are procured in 3,600 transactions. Soda is purchased in 3,400 transactions. Yogurt stays fifth in 2,744 transactions. So these are the ones which are procured in this way across all the transactions. Then, the next part talks about element transaction length. So there are 4,198 transactions in which only one item is purchased. 3,000 transactions where only two items are purchased. 2,400 transactions where three items are purchased. 1,970 transactions where four items are purchased and so on. And there are two transactions where 38 items are purchased. In one single transaction, 38 items have been purchased. So the minimum wise, there is one item purchased. Maximum wise, 38 items purchased. On an average, it is 4.673 items purchased because we have got 91,924 divided by 19,670 which says 4.67. So this 4.67 items have been purchased on an average per transaction. The median is 4, first quartile is 2, third quartile is 6. So this is how we get the distribution of the data. And I can do an inspect for a few things. So head of this whole thing, retail underscore transaction to see my first initial few transactions. Right, the first one is citrus fruit, margarine. So I'll get the items in this particular manner. Fair enough. Now, now this is how my transactions object is created. The transaction summary I can interpret in this way. Then comes my next part where I'm looking at finding the 
association rules in my data right first i have looked at the summary of it then i can do the association rules where i'll use a function called a priori a priori is a, a kind of a function which is there as a part of a rules package which will take the transaction data as the input and the parameters that it takes are something to do with the minimum level of support that you want to provide i mean minimum level of support uh, mean minimum number of occurrences that this particular product should be uh, existing within that 19670 transactions and i can set uh, a confidence level let's say 30% 40% with sales so out of these uh, now out of the product that has come uh, uh, as a part of the support i want to see those combination which have at least 30% of occurrence along with the product that we have selected and i want to display all the rules for it so i have to give a few parameters in the form of a list so let me uh, save this object also right let me call as retail underscore rules so that we'll observe the rules later so i'll use a priori as a function right a priori as a function wherein i'll have to give retail underscore trans as my data object and the parameters that i have to provide to it parameter that i'll provide to it is in the form of a list where i am setting my support level let's say to 0.01 means 10 per 1% so out of the 197 observations 1000 19670 transactions it has to come at least in 1% of the transaction 1% of the transactions is 197 transaction minimum of 197 transactions it has to come only then it would be selected as a part of the other products so that is where i am setting a support of 0.01 i can set a confidence level of 0.3 30% which says out of this 197 let's say some item came 200 times right the other item that it is getting paid with should come at least 30% of that 200 which means at least 60 times within that 200 the other item should be procured along with this item now the only those pairs will be typically identified and the overall thing that i really want is i want the rules to be accumulated and to be uh, listed out so this is where i am getting my rules so when i have executed my rules these are the things that are happening you could see a priori parameter specifications i have set the confidence level as 0.3 support level i have set as 0.01 right a few things that you could clearly see algorithm control wise it is filtering based on 0.1 so absolute minimum support count is 196 1% of the 19670 so obviously the minimum support count is 196 so anything that is coming above 196 times out of this 19670 transactions only that would be counted as a part of creation of the rule so if any item is coming less than 90 196 times it would not be counted for rule creation itself right so this is where the a priori is searching through the item sets so you have 19670 rows and uh, uh, and whatever uh, 187 columns this a priori algorithm is searching through the item sets which are occurring frequently so and for each item set it evaluate the various possible rules and looks out for those items which are coming more than 30% of the times out of this support level that is coming that is what is the confidence above the threshold value and i have given the parameter list 
to say that minimum 196 items should come min minimum 196 times that uh, item should come in the transactions and uh, out of that 196 if i want to uh, pair it with anything else at least that should come 30 percent of the times within that 196 close to 57 58 and 59 times now those rules are all typically getting saved and when I am looking at the result, first check the number of items that are going into the rules. So minimum support is 196, right? So you could say, see that 187 items are there. Sorting and recording items, 95 items have been met. So this is a very important figure, which means out of 187 items, only 95 items have been considered for your rule building because they are the only ones that have come at least 196 times. So the remaining 92 items, they were ignored because they did not come more than 196 times. They appeared only less than 196 times in the data. So that's where only the rules are built based on the 95 items. Now this is where I can see if this number is too small, right here it's almost 50%. But if in some cases the number comes too small or too large, I may have to play around with my support and confidence levels. So right now I really don't need to uh, look at that part. Because at least decent number of uh, items have been pulled out. But if the number of items is too low or too high, I should reconsider changing the levels. Then another important part that I need to look at is how many rules got created altogether. Look at it here. This one, writing 161 rules. So overall, this has given me 161 rules altogether. Again, even this one, if it is too low, it means that better I lower the support levels or confidence levels. And if this number is too many rules are coming out, then I better increase the support or confidence level. Even that way, I can play around with my algorithm to see how many rules are typically getting created. Now, I can very well inspect all the rules, right? So, I will say inspect. What are my rules here? Retail underscore rules. So all my 167 rules I can inspect here. So these are my 161 rules. Now let's interpret the rules. So this is how the rule is coming up. Right? So look at the first rule. The dish and cleaner. So the dish, okay, these uh, could be the dish is coming okay these ones could be the ones that better require some kind of uh, right I could see here frozen and desert these are two different uh, two single words which are not joined together so probably let's uh, ignore the first few where one is the kind of a confidence level that is coming out. Probably let's look at it from here. This is much better. So let's look at this one where it says hard cheese versus whole milk. So the way I am interpreting this, let me interpret this transaction. Hard cheese, whole milk. Now, hard cheese has typically come in 0.01% of the transaction. So, which means 0.01 is the support. Which means hard cheese has typically come. Right, the combination of the hard cheese and whole milk. They have come 1.00%. Means 196 times or 197 times. That is the support part. Then the confidence says, out of whatever is the support that is existing for hard cheese, 41% of the time there was a whole milk also along with it. 
So there is a 41% uh, of the transactions whenever the hard cheese is purchased, whole milk is also purchased, which is making the list lift of it equivalent to 1.6. So the combination typically uh, uh, tells us that the combination is 1.6 times more likely to occur together than if I expect both of them are completely independent. So that is the reason what we typically do is we generally sort it on the basis of lift. So the higher is the lift, I would like to observe those transactions based on the lift. Now this is where I can talk of, so retail, probably I will call it as high rules, right, uh, high lift, let me call it as high lift wherein I am uh, simply uh, considering the head of, right, I will take first few of them, right, I will sort where I have my retail underscore rules, I will sort them by the lift, so based on the lift value I am trying to sort them and I will take 50 elements. So, if I look at retail underscore high lift, so it's a set of 50 rules and I want to really inspect these rules. What are they? So, when I am inspecting it, this is how the rules are coming. Right? Along with the dish, there is a cleaner. The lift is 54. Along with the cleaner, there is a dish. So probably this could be uh, the product itself is dish cleaner. So uh, because the, the it is not separated by uh, uh, spare, it is not separated by hyphen or something. That's where the problem is coming out, right? Probably uh, you could see fish and canned, canned and fish. Even they are working the same way. Roll and potato roll products potato products, real products. Look at this, yogurt and cream cheese, right? Probably this is the one. So the lift is 21.97. Means people who have purchased yogurt, right? All those people who have purchased yogurt, approximately 87, in 87% of the transactions where yogurt has been purchased, even the cream cheese also has been purchased. And both of them together, they have appeared in 1.2% of the transactions. Overall, in 1.2% of the transactions, these two have come together. And whenever yogurt has been purchased, the cream cheese also got purchased 87% of the time. Right? That is how I can typically interpret any of these things that are coming up together. Now, similarly, uh, you could uh, talk about, uh, look at this, a combination of cheese and whole milk, right, uh, versus sliced. So, people uh, who have purchased cheese and whole milk, they have also purchased the slice in 53% of the transactions. All of them together, they appeared in 1.07% transactions and the lift is 21.84. So, I could look at a few transactions. Let's say this one, citrus fruit and other vegetables. People who have purchased citrus fruit and other vegetables, they have uh, the, almost 35.9% uh, of them, they have purchased the root vegetables also. And these three together, they came up in 1.03% of the overall transactions and the lift is 3.29. So, this is how you can very well accumulate all your uh, products. And if required, you can even do a good plotting along with uh, just visualizing the stuff. I can even talk about retail underscore high lift. I can do a plot of it. When I plot it, I will get some kind of understanding here where, right, the graph wise, 
it's a display uh, it is typically taking the confidence on the y axis so the different confidence levels are there on the y axis the support levels are there on the x axis and the lift is identified by this kind of a color so i could see lot of items with a very low support but the confidence levels moderate or high kind of areas very few of them here which have a very high support uh, so if i look at this particular combination this is the one that is having a high support and also a high confidence right so let's look at what this is where the support is uh, almost 0 0.04 so you look at this root vegetables and other vegetables so where the support is 0 0.04 both of them occurred in 4.7% of the transactions. Where the root vegetables are there, other vegetables are procured in 43% of the total transactions. And the lift is around 2.24. So because the lift is around very small value, it would be considered in a very, so possibly this could be the one. Right, the confidence is only 43%. So this point which is shown in a very, very light manner, that could be this particular uh, uh, 85th item root vegetables versus the other vegetables there are a few more i could see where it is more than three or look at this one this is the one looks like so i don't know this uh, this is an error because there is no product that is being looked at so uh, i should not uh, consider that but again 3.9 with the confidence of one even here so the data arrangement is much more important there are a few items where just blanks are present in the data and because of which our whole model is uh, getting a problematic but wherever the data is present correct we can very well visualize this graph quite effectively but much more than that Right, I can find the rules with the high lift and I can even plot the rules with a graph. Whatever are my rules, retail high lift, I can say method equal to graph. This is a very interesting graph that I will get where I could see the clusters. Right, when I say method equal to graph, okay, I have to put a comma. So this is how my graph is coming out, right? You can uh, explore the graph. So this is dish and cleaner coming together. These are not very important fish and canned because it's a canned fish. But what is very important is these items out here, root vegetables, right? Rolls, buns, curd. So I could see, so again, dessert and frozen is a separate set altogether. So I could clearly see here rules which may be useful to seek higher level themes and patterns. So I could see the item clusters. So I could see cream and cream cheese and something else very very close to each other. Right. And probably uh, I could uh, see every circle representing a rule. So the inbound arrow is, no there are inbound arrows as well as outbound arrows. So from the left to the right. It's an inbound arrow, right to the left, it is going to be an outbound arrow. And size of the circle is showing the lift. So here the lift is much higher. These two, the lifts are much higher. It can really uh, help me in terms of interpreting this overall uh, size of the transaction quite comfortably. Right, and I can uh, see what kind of rules can be uh, used for what kind of purpose, which two products can be combined together, which products... Uh, can are, are typically purchased together and based on that I can plan my uh, offers, promotions, packaging, all that kind of stuff quite comfortably. That's where the market basket analysis really helps the marketers in terms of identifying the patterns of the purchase and take appropriate decisions. Now this is what I wanted to look at as a part of this session. If you have any further queries, you can very well get in touch with me by giving me a call on the number that I've given below. Or you can send in an email at momcesar at the rate of facegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.